What's up? Yes. It's a pleasure uh, to meet you. Congrats, you doing? congrats on being Thank here today. Thank you very much. The weather is beautiful just for it you. Is. It did it on purpose. We bought that Antigua, you know, sunshine. Well, a little Caribbean. It, it may rain right. just Thanks. for you as well. Who knows? I'll take the rain. Uh, so I'm here with Eleni James. You play the lovely character of Barry, and I'm all about fashion, so it was really super excited to see how <laughs> dapper you are, and you wear these really cool retro suits. How fun was it to play and be fitted out in these really cool outfits? I, I have to say, I didn't realize how, how much I was going to enjoy it until we did it. And I think that the thing that was really fantastic is our... Um, uh, costume designer um, Jody Simone. She, we kind of decided that we were going to try and stay close to the the suit that Barry would have got off the boat in in the 1950s, 1960s, and then just follow that cut all the way through the different generations. And that's what we tried to do. And it was a huge amount of fun. And I. I have to say, I do like wearing a suit. I was going to say, is this going to be your new kind of ensemble that you step outside your house and it's going to be Barry's aesthetic? I don't know if I'm going to wear it like Barry wears it, <laughs> okay. but I'm, I'm, certainly, one of a kind. I'm certainly going to wear more suits. I love it. Uh, so as far as this character, very intricate, a lot of emotions going on. What was it like taking the vessel of who Barry is, especially since this does come from a novel already? Um, it was really important for me to be true to the character that Bernadine had created in the book. And that character was an incredibly complicated man. Um, was a man who was not being true to himself and not being true to the people he loved most in the world, but he loved those people. Mm -hmm. So it was really important to me to tell both sides of Barry's story, both and, and to make him accessible and to make him, if not likeable, then understandable. And also to, to be true to the love story that's at the heart of, our, of, of, the, of the television series. So that was what was central to me and that's what I set out to do every day I turned up at work. Well, what do you want your audience to leave their seats with as far as messages go? Um, well, firstly, I'd like, them, I'd like the audience to see it. <laughs> Number one, we can't Number get a one, message out without that. So it. definitely go see the, the entire series, of yes, course. Yes, please see the entire series. <laughs> um, I, I, think it's a, I think it's an important story. I think it's a vital story. I think we are um, telling a love story in, at a time and place that hasn't often, if ever, been told. And I think that that's really important. But as for what people take from it, I don't like to dictate what audiences take from my work. I just want them to um, to take something from it, but from having seen it. And I think that Mr. Loverman um, uh, has a lot for audiences to get into. So is this going to be a binge type of feel, or do you want audiences to take their time with it and digest it? Take it how you like it. I love it. <laughs> well, really excited and so happy for you to be here at Tribeca. How does it feel? It's having fun. this premiere here. It's fun. I like New York. Yes. You going to relocate potentially or? I like New York. <laughs> you like it. Okay. <laughs> well, well, we like you as well. All right. So I'm here with Nathaniel Price for Mr. Loverman. And you had two different roles actually on this project. You're associate producer, but also a writer. That's right. And I always find it interesting. I love asking this question because when it's based off a novel, I always wonder, okay, as a writer, right? Do you kind of stay true to the storyline? Do you get to make it your own? What was kind of the roadmap for this project? I think it's a bit of both, really, to be honest. Like, um, when you have a book so beautiful and powerful as this, I think you'd be foolish to navigate too far away from it. But at the same time, you have to have the freedom and, and the courage to, to open it up and, and to make elements your own. And, and when you're adapting for TV, certain things that work within a novel won't translate to screen. So it's, it's, it's finding the balance, I think. And what made you want to be a part of this project? Oh, as I say, the book is so it's so beautiful. It's so. So you were a huge fan before for yes. a very long time. I, I had read the book previously, um, and I loved it. And I loved the emotional complexity of the characters. I loved that it was a, a black family front and center, you know, unashamedly just living their lives. And it wasn't anything, you know, they weren't being subjugated, and they weren't, you know, there was some big trauma in the sense of like, you know, an outside force. But it's more about the. the them living their lives and, and trying to be true to themselves and all keeping a secret or all, all being affected by the huge secret that the patriarch has, has held for over 50 years and I, I just love the ripple effects of that. And there's a lot of messages just like you spoke about what do you hope the audience leaves the theatre thinking? 
in this moment? I hope they leave thinking that there's hope, you know, that you know, you can be and you can live your, your true authentic life and you can be your true authentic self. And I think, you know, it's not easy, but, you know, if you persevere and, you know, you'll get there and, and yeah, hope, I think. And how does it feel being here it's in New amazing. York for Tribeca Film Festival, having this premiere? It's absolutely amazing. As I say, like, as a writer and doing this, you know, I spent so much time alone in my room. I can see in your face. <laughs> you just, there's a little spark that just came out. It was yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and And, you know, you, there's always the hope that, you know, things get made, yes. you know, but to have it made and then to have it premiere here, it's, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. I know, it, it's a huge deal and we're so happy oh. to have this whole series premiering here. I know it's going to have a huge impact in effect. I'm excited to go and watch the whole thing myself and maybe binging it all at once. Yeah, I'm yeah. that type of person, I need to know the end of the storyline. We are here for the premiere of a spectacular eight-part series that will be airing on BBC. Yes. And it's called Mr. Loverman. You are one of the main characters. Yes, I, I play a character called Morris. Called Morris, yes. and he's pretty special. He is special, yeah. Uh, tell me about this character and why you decided to take on this project. Well, the characters are really, he's kind of like, uh, he's the main character's name's Barry, and he's his lover, and they've been lovers for many, many years. Um, the character goes from the age 30 to 74. It was one of these roles where Basically, you just needed to throw yourself in. It was a scary part to play, and I was like, I'm just going to jump in and go for it. He's, he's stoical, he's kind of very grounded. It's just, yeah, it was just one of these parts that you just couldn't say no to. You're kind of like, I feel like the peanut butter and the jelly mix. He is the Barry. peanut butter. Right? <laughs> I, love I don't know which was a peanut, I don't know which was don't a butter, but hey, definitely a mix of peanut some sort. You <laughs> yeah. both to make a good sandwich, yeah. right? Yeah. He's <laughs> a long suffering lover, that's what he is. So. And how was it just, I guess, becoming this vessel for your character, Morris? Because I know it's so complex. There's a lot going on, and the storyline is also almost like a cobweb yeah, yeah, in yeah. some sort of way. It was, it was what you do, right? so my process is that I always kind of try to find the character from the outside in. So I work outwards and bring it in. So I try to find the things that, I'm, that I don't have naturally. Yes. So basically I'd find the physical, the accent, I worked on that. And then I just gradually bring it into myself. So I was very lucky I had Hong, the uh, fantastic director, who enabled me to play the, my own process in it. And work with Lenny was just like an amazing experience. I'm sure Lenny was incredible. It seems like so you two incredible. have such great chemistry, yeah. which <laughs> you can definitely see that oh, on the right. screen, right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, okay. So I love that the two of you just blended so well together. Yeah. It's, just, it's one of these shows where you know, it's one of those topics that we never really talk about within the Caribbean community. We never talk about it within the African community, in the black community in general. So the idea there's this whole generation of gay men who didn't feel they could come out, who could not deal with their stuff, their their story. This is about it. This is celebrating them and hoping we're hoping by the end that people will watch it and have these conversations. Yeah. And this makes it more open. So, so that's yeah. what you really truly want the audience to leave with is yeah. to not be scared, not, not be, be afraid, scared, yeah. to follow what it is you truly believe in. Well, and you know, this is this is what makes these characters happy. This is what makes these characters happy. This is what makes these characters real. This is what we are we are aware of them. Exactly. <laughs> you know, we're aware we're of them. Aware. We're so aware of them. In you 2024, we're, 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 we're real. You know, we're aware of their lives, you know. And, you know, we do, it's a comedy. Yes. So we see it through, a, through the eyes of laughter. Uh -huh. And that's what's so beautiful. Well, I love this outfit, by the way. It's so mint, minty fresh. It's so I'm going to call friend. you our minty fresh today. <laughs> Congratulations on Thank you very having much. this premiere at Tribeca Film Festival. Thank I'm you. sure that you Thank and the team are so excited. And I hope the audience has a blast in there. I know I they will. I hope they will. I really do. I really hope they do. So I am here for the premiere of Mr. Loverman. And this is an eight-part series that's going to take place on BBC. Really excited about the storyline. I know it's so intricate. It's almost like a cobweb effect, I guess you could say, of all of these different storylines coming together and really coming out there and being true to yourself seems like kind of that story and message that you are leaving the audience with. What was it like being a part of this amazing crew and team? Thank you. I mean, it's been a real joy to be part of bringing this to life. It's a book that many of us have loved for many, many years. Um, there's so many facets and layers to it and we were really lucky. We had an amazing team to bring it all together. So many people who worked on this project 
the story means a lot to them and it's personal to them. Um, so there's a lot of passion behind it. And I know that this was shot in London and Antigua. How is it shooting in those two different locations? Yeah, I mean, a lot more fun in Antigua. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, sunny. it's a little bit different. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was really special, actually. Uh, we both live in East London where the show is set, and it was really special to be in some of the most iconic parts of East London and be shooting there. Amazing. So this is kind of your comfort zone, I guess, shooting in London, correct, Hong? Yeah, I, I mean, we live there. I mean, but like any cities, I think the chaos of shooting in a big city is has its own challenges. Yes. But it, it, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful just to be able to seek out those locations that are in the book as well. I love that. It's not every day that you see films that honor the locations. It's kind of green screen and they're adding that kind of effect behind the scenes. So it is authentic when you really are able to visualize that in films and on series. So that makes me so happy that you were actually in Antigua. I mean, for both of you as well, because I mean, who wants to be on a fake beach when you could be on a real beach, correct? Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't think I've ever had a job where I get to swim in the sea in the morning and then go to shoot. Oh, wow, that's yeah. how you started your day, swimming wow. in the sea. I feel so bad for both of you. It sounds <laughs> terrible, and I'm sure the food was horrendous as well, right? Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> the food is stunning. Well, what do you hope to leave your audience with after they see this series? I mean, I, I, I hope, first and foremost, they, they could just enjoy the, the intricate stories and the show is is funny it's dramatic it takes it's almost like a lovely roller coaster of a ride uh, I think that's the first and foremost and hopefully it can then uh, get people talking you know hopefully yes, amazing and how about you Yana? Um, exactly the same I hope it's entertaining I hope people take something away from it but um, you know I think it really leaves on a life-affirming joyous note and and that's that's the sort of tone that we hope will resonate.